Alright, what is up y'all? We're here today for the Season 5 PBL Draft Analysis with your boy Shake Waza for the Dallas Starmies. Now, we are the Season 4 Champions and we are coming back to uh, kind of try to defend our crown here. But, um, we got, we got some new people in here. I'll try to leave everyone's links down below and stuff. I don't know if everyone put them in the Discord, so if they did, they'll be in there. But, I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, JB's back again. Uh, Austin is not this year. But he wouldn't, you know, he wasn't gonna win anyways. Uh, Die is actually in at this time, so that'll be fun. And then, you know, most of the most of the guys from last time are back, along with some new faces, and uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's jump right on in. I had the fourth pick, which is uh, it's pretty fucking dank. I was I was content with that, and uh, I had I had a plan, and I didn't think there was any way that it was gonna it was gonna work. So I was like, I had this hopeful wish that I was gonna get the, these first three months. And I got them. So the first mon we have here is Taco Coco. Uh, like I said, I was fourth pick. I just had to hope that the first three people didn't want it. Oh, and luckily, it, it fell to me. Uh, like Mega Diancie went first round. I think Bulu went second round, and then uh, I don't remember what went third. But not not Coco, and that's all that matters. So we got Taco Coco. We got that nice base 130 speed with the electric terrain hitting hard as fuck on the physical and the special side, and why its stats other than the speed aren't the, you know, they're nothing to write home about, uh, that, you know, that, that electric terrain boosting all your moves is gonna be fucking amazing. Uh, and like I said, it does, uh, hit physically and specially, it gets access to U-turn as well as Volt Switch, and a bunch of other little crazy tech things that you'll probably see me bust out over the course of the season. I fucking love Tapu Coco, I had it in the, uh, PASL, and we took it all the way to finals, and then we actually lost to JB, but still, not bad, not a bad mon. So, the cool thing about Tapu Coco is it's one of those mons that when you draft it, like I have a checklist kind of thing that I that I kind of you know make sure I can get everything of you know you got your two cores, you need a bulky water, you need a fucking uh, a spinner, you need hazards, fucking uh, all that stuff you know. <laughs> also, I'm very hungover, so sorry if I sound dumb sometimes or all the time. But uh, one thing I did want see because like it's a fast electric type, which is always one thing on the checklist. It's also a fairy type, which is also a good thing to have on the checklist. And then it's just a very, very fast mon. Uh, it's that good speed tier 130. And I think the only thing other than... I think this is the fastest thing that was drafted other than Mega Manetric. So everybody's going to have to bring Scarfers to try to uh, outpace this. So, like I said, we got the we got the Volt. And you know I love me some Volt Turn Core. So I wanted the fast Volt Switch and then I wanted the slow U-Turn. And I couldn't think of any better partner to go with young Topo Coco than Mega Scizor. Mega Scizor is a bulky son of a bitch. Those stats are ridiculous. Uh, one SD and Bullet Punch can sweep a whole team sometimes, man. It just, it's too, it's too easy sometimes. And uh, I won my first ever draft league using Mega on the back of Mega Scizor. <laughs> this thing had so many fucking kills. And I'm really excited to use it again. It's been a minute. And uh, I think I think I've grown as a player since then, and I think I can bring some wacky shit. And I know it's got an access to uh, a couple different moves since then, so a lot of things to test out, a lot of things to uh, have fun with. Also, uh, some of these mons aren't nicknamed. I don't. We just drafted yesterday, so I don't have uh, I don't have great nicknames for all of them just yet. But you just you just wait, they're coming. Uh, Sizzy Six, obviously, is for the same as uh, Scizor last year. I'm really tempted to just name half of these after Vines, but I think it would have to be either all of them or none of them after Vines. I don't know, maybe one or two. But, uh, so we have our Fast Electric type, but it's also our Fairy type. We have our Steel type, which is also our Slow U-Turn. So to complete this F Steel Fairy Dragon Core, I wanted a big black Kirum, and that is what I got. Some fucking how we were able to get Tapu Koko, Mega Scizor, Kirum Black as our Steel Fairy Dragon Core, which is just ridiculous, man. Look at those stats. 125 HP, can't be, subs can't be broken by Seismic Toss, 170 base attack, Outrage is going to plow through motherfuckers. Respectable, 120 special attack, because if you don't want to run free shock every week, you're going to need to run Ice Beam most of the time. And then not bad base speed, not bad defenses at all. It's just a great fucking mod, man. This is one of the best, if not the best, wall breakers in ever in Pokemon. <laughs> like, it's just amazing, man. I've, I've always wanted to use Kirim. And I just never really did. I never really had a reason I didn't. I just fucking didn't. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to using this guy. I think it's going to be fucking awesome. Especially with some of the other things that I have planned with it. So, uh... 
Okay, I, okay. I was gonna I was gonna say something, but we'll, we'll talk about that later in the draft. Next, we grabbed Necrozma. One thing I've realized a lot of times on my drafts recently is I haven't been making it a point to draft several rockers. So like in my PCP draft, I had I think one rocker and one spiker, which was annoying. Or you know, I had two rockers, but it was it was Mini or Nido King, and neither of those really appreciated having the move slot taken away from them. So I wanted to try to get at least three things this time that could get access to rocks. And uh, Necrozma is one of those things. So I've helped Austin always draft this motherfucker, and I've been helping him uh, build. So I got some experience using this guy. It's a bulky son of a bitch, man. It's got great stats all around the board, basically. Uh, it's worse stat at its speed stat, which doesn't even fucking matter because it's so bulky. Uh, it gets access to Photon Geyser, which is just a broken move. It's basically, <laughs> it's basically almost as broken as Thousand Arrows, which we. Uh, we, we abused to the full extent last season of the PPL, so I'm hoping this will be this will be our new Zygarde right here, and we can just photon guys through all the things. Prism Armor, taking 75% uh, damage from super effective moves is going to be fucking awesome. Uh, this thing eats hits, it gets up rocks, it can set up physically and specially, which has kind of been a, a theme for most of these mods. Everything except Scizor hits physically and specially so far, which is cool. It makes it really hard to prep for, and it forces people to bring split defenses rather than just dumping 252, 252 into like, you know, just one specific category because they know what they're going to prepare for. But if you're prepping for Coco, Kirum, Necrozma, you don't, there's, you can't just do that. Like, you, there, you just can't. You just fucking can't. I don't know, maybe somebody can. We'll see. But, yeah, so, after my first three big old offenses, big old offensive mons, and we got Necrozma, doing, giving a little bit of support, but then also being pretty fucking offensive itself, I wanted something disgusting, and fat, and bulky, with Regenerator, and Wish, and you already know what I'm talking about, Alamola is back, not a healer, we're getting Regenerator up in this bitch, and this big old 272 HP stat, we're gonna be passing a half of that in a Wish, and that will just heal back up our mons. It also gets access to healing wish. And, you know, not terrible stats. It's Pedef isn't the greatest. You don't really care about the speed though. Special attack is dog water, but uh, it, it's bulky, man. It sits there, it eats hits, it regens out, it gives me some team support, and it can toxic things. And all that, all that classic Alamolo stuff. I'm not gonna spend too much time on mons that don't, you know, have anything super crazy about them, but I, I've uh, <laughs> I've grown quite fond of Alamolo over the years, and I've grown quite fond of not having to play Alamola, so if I take it, I don't have to play it, so that's cool with me, except I think one guy did draft Ditto, so if he copies my Alamola, I'm gonna be upset, but, yeah. Next, we have Smeargle, and Smeargle is great, because, <clears throat> just like, just like those other three months we talked about, it does anything, it does every, it literally does anything, everything. Uh, I don't believe I can bring Moody, which I probably wouldn't anyways, because it's kind of a dick move, but, uh, yeah, it's the, the ability doesn't really matter. It's a Smeargle, man. It hits a fairly decent... For what it is, it hits a fairly decent speed tier. Uh, I can run Spore, even though I am on an Electric Terrain team. Spore probably isn't the best idea, but I'll make it work. We'll see. And uh, just being able to get up any hazard ever and do any move and just... I don't know, man. Smeargle's gonna... <laughs> Smeargle's gonna be a lot of fun, I think. It's gonna be... Uh, it's gonna be some shit. So... Uh, I wanted to make it a point also this season to draft multiple things that could be considered not designated leads, but things that would, when you see it at team preview, you'd be like, okay, well that thing's coming out first. I want multiple of those so that uh, I don't have to think about my leads too much. I always spend way too much fucking time trying to figure out who's going to be leading what, and I just want to have, I want to have, in building, I'd like to be able to just have designated leads. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, next here on the list, I wanted to grab Marowak Alola, Young Alola Whack, because one thing that sucks about drafting Tapu Koko is people abusing your terrain versus you. So having a Mon that isn't a ground type that hits, uh, that <laughs> hits, that is immune to electric types, hence Lightning Rod, is going to be fucking amazing. So this thing also gets Stealth Rocks. This thing is also on the same page as Kirin Black, where it just hits hard as fuck, holding that thick club because its attack stat is going to be doubled. And obviously, this is a Wi-Fi leak, so everything is at level 50. So we'll just we'll just say we're adamant, and uh, we'll put some IVs in there. 144. That'll be doubled. So fucking 288. It, that it didn't take me that long to think of that, but I like double and triple checked in my head to make sure it didn't sound dumb. But I guess it all kind of ended up happening anyways. Lol. But Marowak Alola, I've never used it as a fire type. I love its typing, honestly, and when it came out, I was like, okay, that's the coolest fucking Alola mon there is. I wanted to try it out. And uh, particularly on this particularly on this team, 
I think it's going to be really well go really well because uh, the next one we have here is going to be Scolipede. So here in the PBL, speed passing is not banned. So I think we're going to get into some shenanigans where I'm going to pass speed to a threat and just fuck everyone's day up. So passing speed into stuff like Kieran Black or Marowak Alola, Necrozma, any of that shit, it's going to be amazing. Uh, <laughs> I'm really, really excited to pass speed to those motherfuckers, I'm not going to lie to you. Now, speed pass is kind of a scummy strategy, I'll be the first to admit that, but fuck it, I'm doing it, it's not banned, if I didn't do it, someone else would do it. In fact, uh, one person missed a couple picks of their draft and then tried to take Scolipede at the end whenever they're doing the makeup picks, and I was like, no, 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 this is mine, you can't have it. <laughs> so, Scolipede's going to be fucking awesome. And then, uh, obviously, I can't have a slide for this, or like a slot in the team builder, but our next pick was of the Electrigum Z. I don't know why I said that so dumb, but it pairs amazingly with Tapu Koko. Also, Kirim is going to really like having it uh, sometimes because uh, Z Fusion Bolt's going to fuck some shit up. So, uh, obviously, everything will be terrain boosted. A uh, couple, couple other things get electric moves as well, so we'll spread those all around. But mostly Koko Kirim, I think that'd be really cool. So, uh, just having just having that big old Z nuke, and especially just sticking it out, it'll probably go on top of Coco most weeks, anyways. Honestly, that thing is a fucking nuke, so that's gonna be awesome. And Z wild charge is pretty cool in that thing, too. So I want to take the recoil, oof, gigavolt havoc all day. Then we have Hitmonlee. So, uh, I don't like Coco Lucha, I don't know, man. It's just not really my style, it's it's a thing. But I don't really like it very much. So I decided we weren't. That's, that's a little too mainstream for me. So we're going with Coco Lee. And uh, so we get the Unburden. I can give this man the Electric Seed. He'll get that doubled speed, which isn't quite as fast as Halucha. But uh, I think his attack stats actually higher. And uh, it's a spinner as well, so that's cool. We can get that super fast spin off. And it has not bad spadef at all, honestly. Uh, it has good moves priority. Obviously, stab moves and close combat and high jump kick and stuff like that are going to fuck some shit up. And uh, it's one of the only Hitmons that gets access. Well, I guess they all get Throat Chop now, but it's the only Hitmon that gets access to Knockoff, which is super helpful because otherwise it's pretty much walled by Ghost types. <laughs> so Knockoff is very, very helpful on those. And uh, yeah, man, I, I like. I've used Hitmonlee a couple times. I like it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. And next, uh, this okay. Just full, full fucking disclosure. It, the draft gets a little weird from here. <laughs> uh, basically, after I took Hitmonlee, I pretty much had taken everything like important to me. I had my electric immunity, I had spinners, I had hazards, I had fucking wall breakers and sweepers and all that shit. So, I needed a grass type. I already have one regenerator mon, so I figured I might as well get a regen core going on. And uh, rather than take Tangrowth, I decided to be a man and take Tangela, that boy. Dankula is back on the squad once again. <sighs> you know, I love I love me a good mascot pick, and uh, I didn't I didn't do Tangula very much justice in the PCP last season, so I think he needs a shot at redemption, and this is the perfect league to do it in. So Tangula doesn't have the best stats, but once you stick in a Violet on there, they're not half bad at all, man. Uh, its defense is already really fucking good, so you can usually just invest especially and kind of make up for that lackluster stat. And then with the re regen, plus having access to, uh, you know, Giga Drain and Leech Seed, fucking Synthesis, having Regenerator, uh, Sleep Powder and stuff like that, it's it stays alive a really long time if you play it right. And once again, Electric Terrain and Sleep Powder don't mix very well, but we'll, we'll see. It's an option. It's, you know, you can't, you can't sleep on that at all. And uh, I don't know, man. I love Tangela. You know what? Oh, well, you know, fuck it. Literal vine. Next, we have the pickle again. I got the, <laughs> I got the, the Tangela pickle core once again. I know I already have Alamomola, but I got some fucking strats playing with this guy, man. I used it in PCP, like we said earlier, and uh, it was pretty good when I remembered to bring the right ability. But it's just a bulky motherfucker. It's uh, it seemed necessary. Like I really like Alamomola as a bulky water, but. I kind of wanted to have another one that, because it does some stuff that Alamomola doesn't. It gets stuff like Memento, can set screens, uh, pain split and recover, and all that bullshit. Um, soak toxic is always clean, although Alamomola can do that. But it's just it's it's just something fat that's kind of just gluing all of my big old threats together, 
I think it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited to have a redemption chance to use this. Then next, I realized I didn't have a ground type, and I was getting a little bit weak to ground itself. And <laughs> I'd kind of already decided I wanted like half this draft to be like fucking 25 point ones, which is like in you and below. And I've, I've seen people use this, and I kind of wanted to try it out for myself. It looks bulky, it looks fun. So we went ahead and picked up Young Clay Doll here. Um, I, it's a fucking owl and a dreidel or something. I don't know what the fuck it's supposed to be, but it's a thing. So Clay Doll's stats are not that impressive. Even its defenses aren't the best, considering it's a bulky ass mon. But like I said, it is a bulky fucking mon. So with it's. Mons like this really appreciate leftovers recovery, so it'll probably need to be that most weeks. But we got ourselves another spinner. We got ourselves another bulky psychic type because who you can't have too many bulky psychic types. Fuck it. And then it actually gets really good coverage. You know, like all like most psychic types do get pretty damn good coverage. So having the ground plus the psychic, it's gonna it's gonna have a lot of stuff to do. So like Earth Power Ice Beam coverage is super clean versus most teams. That's why Mammal Swine never has any switch ins. But Having this guy I think will be very helpful. It takes a little bit of pressure off Hitmonlee, so if I want to bring it offensively, I can bring this as a spinner. And I also have Defog on both Coco and Scizor, and uh, I feel like there's one more. I guess Smeargle would count as well as a, as a potential Defogger, but uh, yeah, so we got, we got plenty of hazard removal options. That was another thing too that I didn't like about some of my previous drafts, is that I didn't have quite the best hazard removal options, so I wanted to make sure we got a couple of them this time. Now. I need you to prepare yourself for this last pick because honestly, I didn't think I was gonna have the balls to do it. But I realized I'm a man, and I I need I I gotta I got <laughs> I gotta meme a little bit this season. Okay, I won the last one. I think I've earned the right to meme just a little bit. We're well, still gonna take it seriously, but oh, we gonna meme. <laughs> so we pick up Reggie Gigas with our last 25 point or 25 of our last 35 points. So it leaves us with 10 left over. I can't do anything with that bullshit, but. Yeah, we got Reggie Gigas. So Reggie Gigas, Reggie Gigas's stats are ridiculous, man. It's got like Kieran Black stats. <laughs> Actually, kind of better than Kieran Black stats, but obviously it does have the slow start on there. So that's not a problem though, because if I pass speed into this bitch, it really won't matter. Uh, it does get stuff like you. Obviously, it didn't get protect, but you can sub up on stuff. And if I have a speed boost, I won't really care because then I can fast sub into everything, and then you know just uh just eat lefties and hopefully get five subs off in that time and then uh, it does get access to stuff like power up punch it has a it's a normal type obviously so it heads it gets a really crazy move pool and it is another thing that kind of uses that uh, electrium Z if I really want it to I don't know if I will but it, if I, it fucking could you know it, it fucking could so I'm really excited to use Regigigas I think Pat hates me now because I, I insisted on drafting it but me and we, we had some good we had some good laughs about it while we were uh, while I was drafting, so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. All in all, this is quite possibly the most busted team I've ever used. I'm very 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 excited to use the Volturn core of Tapu Koko and Mega Scizor. I'm really excited to use fucking Speed Pass into Marowak and Kyrum. I'm very excited to use the Pickle Tangela core once again, and I think I'm the most excited to get Reggie Giga some fucking kills. I don't know. I, I want to say like, I want to like set a kill goal, but I don't want to also because if I don't hit it, then I'm going to be really sad. So we'll just, we'll just say I'm going to get as many fucking kills with Reggie Giga as I can this whole season. So you heard it here first, kids. Reggie Giga says it's, it's coming to some games and it's going to, people are going to see it on the sheet and you're going to prep for it. This man's coming. It's going to fuck your shit up. <laughs> Man, five turns is all I need. Five turns is all I fucking need. Oh man, that's gonna be fun. But yeah, that should just about do it for the draft anal here. Um, I, I appreciate you watching it. I hope you guys are hyped. I think it's gonna be a fun season. I think this is a broken ass team, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, so I'll, like I said, I'll leave as many. I'm not gonna fucking go search for people's links, but there's a there's a part in the Discord where people put them. So if they put them in there, their links will be down below. And check everybody, check everyone else's draft analysis out and whatnot. I think mine might be out a little sooner than most, but definitely check everyone else's out. And uh, yeah, just get hyped for this season, man. PBL season five. We we here to defend our crown with Reggie Geeks. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be a fun time. So go ahead and like, go ahead and subscribe, do all that bullshit, and I'll see you guys later. Bye forever.